Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. You guys know the actor Idris Elba? Uh, he uh, he was in Thor. He was the guy that was in charge of the gate, you know, when they traveled on the Rainbow Bridge or whatever, you know. They, where yeah, they went yeah. There. yeah. I know the name. I, have, I don't know. I mean, I've obviously have seen Thor, so I guess I've seen him. I, I, but it's like one of those dudes that's like all the, all the rage these days. Everyone's talking about how great of an actor, and I'm like, I don't think I've seen him in any movies. Of him. Yeah, he's a, he, he's a British actor. He was in a show called Luther that was really popular in England, uh, and eventually he started getting roles that we recognize him here in America. Steve, did you see Hobbs and Shaw? The uh, yes. Fast and Furious. He's in that one. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Idris no is, recollection. Uh, <laughs> no, no I'm like, yeah, I know, I know. I do not remember yeah. what I watched yesterday. And people have been asking, you know, people have been saying he should be the next James Bond. I mean, the, the guy's a, he's a legit actor, man. He's good. And he was just interviewed where he shared that when he when he moved to New York from London to pursue acting, he used to sell weed and had a job as a comedy club doorman. And <laughs> this this led to him selling weed to comics like Dave Chappelle. How about that? So Idris Elba was like, "Hey, man, you know what, Dave? I got I got what you need." Moved to America, and in that time period, I did a lot of things. Some things I'm not proud of. I used to sell weed for a little bit. I was a doorman at uh, Caroline's Comedy Club, which is um, fascinating now when I meet the comedians that you kind of remember the English guy. David Chappelle remembers me because he used to buy weed from me. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I did all kinds of things, to be honest. I wonder when that moment was where Dave Chappelle is like, maybe he's watching a movie or he's hearing about this new, you know, hot actor that everyone's talking about. He's like, that guy looks like the dude that used to sell me weed at Caroline's. I know. that, <laughs> I, And you'd probably think, no, nah, it can't be the same guy. Right. You know, you just, I mean, you just got to be thinking, oh, he just must look like that guy. He can't be the same guy yeah, because you just don't, you just never think that like the doorman would end up being somebody like just fantastic, like, like as, as, as good as Idris Elba. You just never think that. Right, but it's no different than like look watching a movie. Like I'm pretty sure that person was my waiter when I was in California. You know what I mean? Like that's oh, just like yeah, every, every yeah. actor has to have some kind of w- job that they probably have the ability to like dip out whenever an acting op- acting an acting opportunity comes up. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, man. Here's uh, a, dude, I I I guess it's just it, I, it wasn't on my radar, but I was watching the clip of him talking about that, and the backdrop had Sonic the Hedgehog too. Yes. That's the thing. Oh yeah, it's it's. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it out? Is oh, it, yeah. it's yeah. out today? Out yeah, it's out today, and he plays uh, Knuckles, the echidna or echidna or whatever that is. Oh, so I he's forgot just, that was even being done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's okay. out today. Yep. yep. Well, the first one got. I mean, got positive reviews. People really liked it, and Jim Carrey's back, right? Oh yes, yeah, he is. first not- one was awesome, dude. Did you see it? No, I'm just I'm just saying okay. it's awesome that I never saw. No, of course I saw it. The <laughs> first one was why are you guys looking at me like okay. I'm crazy? Because we're kind of surprised you went and saw a movie. <laughs> and also, you're no, very... I didn't go see it. I saw it on television. You're also uh, very sarcastic, oh, so I'm so like, you... is this a joke? Wait, no. <laughs> Wait, so you did see you did see it. Sonic the Hedgehog, the first movie, yes. I, okay, I I totally misunderstood. Yeah. yeah, I thought I was gonna say I I you you sounded like you saw it. Yeah, it's I, awesome. I heard, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, there we go. The second one has ninety eight percent audience score. And yeah. a sixty-two percent tomato score. That's still fresh. Yeah. And look, yeah, that, yeah, two percent more. Oh, I got sixty-seven percent. Yeah, mine. sixty-seven. Yeah. It must All have right. just changed, Danny. Oh wow. And the OG, the first one, got sixty-three percent tomato meter, ninety-three percent. So it's about what the first one was, which is very unheard of for a sequel. Yeah. Oh, it says that one person wrote, "If you enjoyed the first film, Sonic the Hedgehog two serves as a generally acceptable sequel." That's exactly what you want as a generally, generally acceptable. acceptable. <laughs> there you go. Honestly, that is like a plus plus when. A sequel and a uh, video game movie. No, that's impressive. I mean, that is that very sounds, impressive for those two things. That sounds like a critic, though, that's just tired of having to go to certain movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine, like, you're, like, a critic, like, you've spent your whole life watching, like, some of these, like, super, you know, fancy foo-foo movies, and then they're like, hey, we need you to review Sonic the Hedgehog yeah. too." And you're like, why do you hate me? 
Exactly. <laughs> you'd be like, I'd be that guy. I'd be that grumbly like you're sending me to this. And you you know you're getting these assignments because they're trolling you. Because, you know, you probably run around the office like, you know, in my day we had real movies to review. And they go, okay, good. Here you go, Jimmy. Here's this new one we want you to check out. Yeah. And, and this is just in theaters, huh? So I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. the I'm days of watching things on like HBO Max are gone, huh? Yeah. I know, it's so sad. I really love those days. Um, I still haven't seen The Batman, and my friends are just looking at me like, what is wrong with you? Uh, and there's a, there's another movie out uh, that everyone's been talking about that they love. Is it Everybody, Everything, Every Time, or something like that? Everything, Everywhere, you? All at Once. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw the previews for that, and it looked amazing. But I'm just like, do I want to go to the movie theater? Uh, I will go for Doctor Strange when that comes out, but... I can't believe I haven't seen the Batman yet. It's like I'm actually surprised by that as well, being such yeah. a big comic book fan you are. I know. I just haven't got back into the rhythm of going to movie theaters again, like on a regular basis. Is it Joe's fault? Because usually that's your movie buddy. I think it's my, it's both of our fault, if anything, but mm. it's definitely my fault because I usually do say, "Hey, Joe, let's do this," but I haven't done that. I haven't like reached out. I think I'm gonna have to. Uh, though the Michelle Yeoh movie, I might. I think Kathy loves that actor, so I think we might have to see that together. It, but it's I'm a, all for the Batman, Joe. It's getting really well reviewed on both ends. Ninety seven percent tomato meter and audience score. Whoa! Well, it looks like a, it's a sci fi trip. It's got Michelle Yeoh, who's just amazing. Uh, she I get nervous anti- when I see those kind of movies get that higher review. I'm like, I probably won't like it. It's probably no, you probably won't. Me. Yeah, it's 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 probably it's going to be trippy. Yeah. I bet it's going to be a little bit of a trippy flick. Well, it's done uh, by the same guys who did that Swiss Army Man, the one with uh, Daniel Radcliffe is like a dead body who can do all this weird uh, stuff. Oh yeah, that uh, that could be scary. Never heard of it. Yeah, that, that, that you know, I, that, I don't know if that's going to sell Steve. <laughs> no, no, it won't at all. This texture yeah. said Sonic the Hedgehog two is amazing. No, All right. Said, I got that. my Sonic tickets for today, bitches, in Gig Harbor, and I'm definitely getting some beer. Bitches. Yeah, you know, Sonic was never my jam. That's why I'm not in a rush to see it, because I just, that was never my favorite game. So, so did you see the first one? No, never did. I really think you would enjoy the first one. This, the first one was really fun. Well, if it, if Jim I, Carrey was great in it. I heard he was, and I'm sure it's free somewhere. Is it free somewhere? I don't know. It Maybe it's not be. free. It may not be. You know, whenever a sequel comes out, usually people go, okay, we're going to make you pay to see the first now one. Now we're going to charge you two ninety nine just to get exactly. your money. Those yeah, so if it's <laughs> free somewhere, let me know. I'll check it out, uh, maybe. It looks maybe on Amazon Prime, so I would search that. It says yeah. premium subscription. It doesn't tell you whether or not you have to pay. Usually it'll say, oh, oh. pay this much. And it also and says Paramount, Paramount Plus. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Has uh, script- oh, Paramount you, Plus has it? If you've got a sub for oh, it, it should be yeah. able to. Uh, yeah. I got Paramount Plus because I've been watching Picard, so okay. Oh, there there you go. Go. I'm good. All right. I probably still won't watch it, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm going to be honest with all of you. I got a lot of TV to watch. Baseball season has started. I'm not sure I'm ever going to watch Sonic. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I know it's going to be. A, maybe if you're on yeah. a plane and you forgot your, like, technology. And they That's said, actually a good yeah. idea. If I can download it to the plane, because <laughs> uh, I have been watching. It's funny. I've got my plane shows now. It is so weird. Like, there are shows now I only watch on the plane. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. new Apple TV Plus show starring Adam Scott called Severance, which is really a good show, but it's very slow. And uh, But it's like... I don't watch it at home. I only watch it on the plane. Like, I'll download it for the plane and be so excited. But when I'm home, I, like they even said, there's a new episode. And I'm like, yeah, well, I, I have a plane trip come up in a couple of weeks. I'll watch it then. And it's, it's kind of like, like tomato juice. I only enjoy it on a plane. I don't ever have it yeah. outside of that. No, yeah, ginger yeah. ale for me. Yeah, I get yeah, that's it. it. So, you know, you got my plane juice. Plane I know. I tried juice. watching, because um, uh, I think it was either Alaska or American Airlines, whatever, whichever one has the app. where I, I think both do, where you say, like, okay, you can watch some free movies on, on your phone. And I was trying to watch um, uh, the new Bill and Ted movie. And? Oh. I, I fell asleep, so I, I can't oh. do anything else. <laughs> you still that haven't another? seen that one? That kind of surprises well, me. Well, my yeah. wife hasn't seen any of the other Bill and Ted movies. And oh. I feel like jumping right into the third one, oh. not going to happen. And I don't yeah. really think she's going to enjoy the first or the second one. Yeah, they, I don't yeah. even know if they Dang. hold up, to be honest with you. No. They're pretty yeah. entertaining, but also there's like a nostalgia of like... 100%. Remember, yeah, so if someone's going into it blind, they might yeah. not. Yeah. Like even the new one, I was like... Don't hate it because it definitely is triggering some fun nostalgia of the original ones. But I was like, I wasn't fighting to stay awake to see it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, and and I and I don't think I ever really. I don't, man. If I if I did, I can't remember a lot of them. I don't think I watched a lot of the Bill and Ted's even back in the day. 
So I have no rush to go watch it. And I just feel like everything Keanu Reeves is either, you know, he's he's Neo or he's John Wick. So it's like to see him not in one of those roles, my brain can't handle it. And he's definitely neither of them in these movies. Yeah. I mean, I, I expect him to shoot somebody and he's not going to shoot anybody. No. I'm just like, <laughs> all right. You know what's funny? Like, when I was watching it. It's like because they're older now and they're still being the same characters. I was like. Why are you two just going to grow up? <laughs> All right, old man. Wow. Here comes the dad vibes. Oh, right? Wow. I'm like watching this and I'm just like, you can't be that dumb still. <laughs> I'm with you, Rev. I, I, I think that prior to the birth of your child, you would have been with those guys. Oh, dude. Oh, I mean, dude, yeah. totally. I yeah. mean, I can say the same about myself if I was watching myself in like a real life movie. I'd be like, when is that guy got to grow up? Yeah. Like, it was just... It was just kind of a funny thing. Like, you're just like, you look older, but you're acting the same way. <laughs> and, too, I'm with you, man. Sometimes you just, you know, I don't know. Like, every once in a while you got a friend like that. And you're like, you know, everybody else seems to have somewhat gotten together. Like, look, here's the thing. The one guy who I thought would be like that out of your friend group is your buddy Munson. Mm -hmm. But actually, Munson has grown up. I mean, even he's made his way and done stuff. But he's a you dad know, now, man. Yeah, but if Munson was still Munson, you oh. know what I mean? Especially like five years from now, and he was still the Munson we knew when he was in his twenties. I'd be like, dude, what are you? This, come on. He's like two fireball shots away from being the same old Munson, though. Yeah, he's Frank the Tank. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's. I still he's, think we can get him drunk yeah. enough where he'll just randomly yell at a group of people the c word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, but I think you're right. I think I think he's going to need. I think rather than doing it just like he always did it, I think you're right. I think you probably just have to like give him a little. Hey, here you go. Here's some Munson juice. Here you go, buddy. Munson juice. That's what you got to get. I don't know if that's going to go over well. That's not well. You know what I mean. Oh, so uh, Swiss Army Man's about a farting dead body. Yeah. Steve would like it mostly. Mostly. <laughs> All right, Steve. You know what? Check it out. If you like it, let me know. Okay, I will. Yeah. All right, well, as I said, I, I don't have a lot of time to be watching a lot of stuff because, as you know, baseball season is starting. The Mariners opening day today as they're taking on Minnesota, and we are going to chat with former M's pitcher, now analyst, Ryan Roland-Smith. He joins us at 817 on The Rock. DJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock. Of Seattle. BJ and Briggs have our next guest on. Great friend to the show. And today, the Mariners drought ends starting today as the season Woo! starts. And I'm very excited to chat with Ryan Roland Smith. What's up, Hyphen? What's up, fellas? How we doing? Oh, we're doing well. Uh, if you guys uh, don't know, man, Ryan is a, a good friend of the show. If you want to tweet at him, it's at hyphen18, at hyphen18. Uh, don't forget his podcast, The Top Step with Ryan Roland Smith and Grant Balfour. Uh, you know, a couple, couple of Aussie dudes talking baseball because they played the game. And uh, Ryan, we're excited. Uh, we talked to you. Of course, you told us we had a lot of reasons to be excited last time we talked to you. And this was really during the strike when it first started. Um, and, and the lockout, I should say. And... But now, you know, we've got the emergence of, of uh, you know, of Julio Rodriguez, and uh, and now we've got opening day. Uh, Steve is always excited. He always thinks it's now time, but I think a lot of people are thinking this is now time. Yeah, for sure. And and first of all, I do have to, do have to say this. I was, I was thinking about this this morning when I woke up. I knew I was talking to you guys today. Well, actually, I didn't know. I, I, was, waiting for, I was waiting for a text message or something because that was just the uh, tradition. Every opening day... I was talking to you guys, and then one year I didn't, and we we sucked. The team was bad. That's an old one. So hopefully we can restart this tradition. But no, hey, look, I love opening days. They are the best. And for for this team too, you, you got to remember that there is a lot of expectations on this team, and there's a lot of storylines and everything else. But I, I was looking through the roster. Literally half of them is their first ever opening day. And guys wow. like obviously Julio Rodriguez, Jared wow. Kelly, guys like that. But even the older guys too, man, like Paul Seawald, who was an absolute stud last year, he's never had an opening day. I mean, there, there is a bunch of guys. So it's a special time. But I think as far as this team goes, and we talked last time um, after the – I think it was around the time of the lockout. But I, I just think that what, what I do like is going into this season, you, you had the option, and, Jer and Jerry DePoto had the option to do – something that you never ever want to do and that's where you feel the pressure where you have to start acquiring every single player and to do that you're going to have to trade away all these young players that the Mariners have stockpiled the last couple of years 
but he didn't have to do that. I think that move when you when you got Jesse Winker and uh, Eugenio Suarez from the Reds, they literally gave up one guy. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, all right, are we going all in here where you're just going to get rid of the entire farm system and if it doesn't work out, then you're looking at a 2023 and beyond where you have to rebuild again uh, from, the, from that foundational level. But he didn't have to do that. He basically made some moves, big ones, and some lateral moves that, man, have made this team so much better than the 90-win team we saw last year. So it's an exciting time for sure. I just right. saw this morning, dude, uh, the, they just uh, uh, locked in J.P. Crawford five years for $51 yeah. million, dollars, man. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. Uh, I, I, lo- I love seeing that, man. But here's why, a couple of reasons. Number one, I haven't looked at the numbers yet. I don't know if you, if you, if you, I'm guessing it's probably around $10 million bucks a year. It's not like mm-hmm. something where they had to go into the... Hundred, hundreds of million of dollars to get J.P. Crawford to, to lock him up. But any time be pre-opening day that you can get someone like J.P. Crawford, who was really vocal last year, he's one of those leaders, where you can say, here you go, dude, we want you here, not just this year. We're not going to start messing with you at the trade deadline. We're not going to start figuring out other options here at shortstop. You're our guy right now. Here you go. Here's five years. Man, I'm telling you right now, that energy from J.P. just resonates throughout the clubhouse. You see it from a player's point of view. That guy gets it. Everyone shakes his hand. He's happy. Other guys start thinking long term, just like him, around the clubhouse. That makes life a lot easier. So I'm excited. And played, for a lot of he's played his way into that contract. Yeah, and for folks, I mean, he's a, he's our Gold Glover, right? The Gold Glover shortstop, and mm-hmm. yeah, boy, yeah. people. I'm sure a lot of people like Robbie Ray, the new stud pitcher, love having him behind him. Oh yeah, and, and let's not forget too. I mean, he came over, JP Crawford, and these are one of the. This is one of these storylines that I love, man. Like, the, people don't realize Perry Hill. He's a coach with the Mariners. He's old school. Now, baseball has taken on this new identity of analytics and numbers driven, and you know, you go all the way back to the Moneyball era and stuff like that. Well, Perry Hill is completely opposite. He's old school. So when JP Crawford, who was a round pick, I wouldn't call him a bust, but he was a bit of a letdown with the Philadelphia Phillies. He comes over for pretty much, not, pretty much, you know, not, I wouldn't say nothing, but coming over to get an opportunity. He kind of had this this thing about him where he's like, oh, you know, the game owes me something. All of a sudden, Perry Hill got around him, this old school dude. He was kind of like his mentor. Next thing you know, J.P. Crawford, night and day different when it comes to attitude, work ethic, routine, everything. And now the the, the results show for themselves, man. I mean, not only a gold glove shortstop, but he can get to, he's way more patient hitting the ball to left field, all those little things that you just love to see. So I just think there's pretty good little storylines here and guys to root for with this team. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So we're talking to Ryan Roland Smith about your Seattle Mariners, and uh, Ryan, there's been some changes. Part of the, you know, part of the lockout agreement was uh, some changes to the game, and uh, and, for, and some people who are casual to the game might not know. So what's what what is something we should be looking for? The differences that we should see when play when we when we watch the M's play. Well, some of the big ones, like some of the big ones that were discussed, you know, during the lockout, like banning the shifts, um, which that'll be implemented next year. Um, some of the other things, like you know, a pitch clock, that'll that'll come in uh, next year as well. So, some of the big ones you'll see next year, you won't quite see the change right away. But some of the the ones that I really like is, um, like for example, the like the mound visits has been around the last couple of years, but now they're taking that to another step where all of a sudden you can't disengage um, the rubber. So, for example, this I love this one, man. I love this one. So, uh, the pitcher. Can, let's say I'm a lefty, right? And you know, I, I, I did a decent move. I can't just keep picking over the first base. And you have the crowd starts booing. It's like, let's go, get on with it. Well, all of a sudden, if you pick over twice, the third time, that runner can just take off. If you don't get him out on the third time, he gets a free bag. So oh, wow. Like that are gonna, yeah, going to make the game speed up in, in that sense. Or even like the umpires, again, just like in football, which I, I do like. Like, I'm, I'm a... Yeah, I'm, I'm on the fence with football regarding my how big of a fan I am. I'll be honest with you, but I do love it, man. When when, when there's a play and the and the uh, official stands there and, and announces that that's going to be the same in baseball now too. So if there's a review, the umpire will will um, announce it, and that's kind of caught on. It's, it's a nice little thing. But I but as far as <laughs> I, I don't want to go back into the lockout because I remember talking to you guys about that, and I was stressed, man. I'm like, oh, if we have this lockout, this is going to be such a dud of a season. But they got through that. There is some changes in the game, which I've got no problems with whatsoever, uh, and it makes the game a lot more fun to watch. 
So Ryan, I, I read that they were they were gonna and, and maybe I'm losing my mind. Maybe it's next year. But are they putting bracelets on the catcher and like a radio control buzz or something in the hat so that there's no more signs? <laughs> I knew you had to go. I knew you had to go there because I was trying to avoid that. It, it, look, man, it, I get it. Technology, I understand it, and there's gizmos, and there's some money to be made from these companies. But I'm not a fan of this. And I'll, I'll dive into that with you. I was trying to avoid it, dude. If you didn't, if you didn't pick up on that, but that's okay. Basically, the catch has got this device on their, you know, on their right sleeve, um, or they, excuse me, on, on their on their left sleeve, and they can type in a button which which says basically fastball inside or fastball outside or something. And the, the pitcher has a device just in their hat, just over their ear where they can hear exactly what the pitch is. And he can, I guess he can shake or, I don't know, maybe he presses a button, no, but he can shake it off and they go again. Well, you're allowed five of these on the field. So, you know, the, the infielders have to know what pitch is coming to so they can set up their oh. defense. Yeah, so you're allowed five of these on the field. And the thing is, here's the crazy part of this too, man, and this was brought up. You can, like, let's say there is a shift, right? And the certain fielders need to know. You can share them. So, you know, old mate at, you know, third base can walk over to the shortstop and say, hey, I need that from you right now. I'm putting it in his hat or, or here. The soft. It's just, to me, look, I've got no problem against technology whatsoever. I, I, I'm fascinated in the new way of the game, everything else. But let's just leave the computers and the gizmos <laughs> off the field of battle. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go to war, fellas. Like, and the other thing is, too, guys, from, from an optic standpoint, I love when I'm watching the game, you see the catch a flash of sign, so you kind of you kind of know what's going on before he throws that pitch. I, I like that, too. So, yeah, whatever. It's can, all good. Here's more importantly, it. can we play Wordle on this thing? I mean, that's all I need that's to know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the yeah, nail exactly. polish injury. Like, what about the nail polish industry? I mean, they, they're going to lose a lot of money now that the catchers don't put nail polish on. This is a beating. Yeah, there, there's a pick. There's, I'm telling you, there, there's protests out in front of MLB. Uh, the offices right now, everyone's trying to figure it out. But it is the nail polish industry. They're all standing there with their, their little uh, their picket line, basically saying, what are you doing? Wait. But no, it, it's, it's, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a bummer, man. I, I just want to keep the game. I'm not trying to be you know, back in my day or old school or whatever. <laughs> But just, I just, I, I love the fact that you have to, you know, give a little uh, sneaky little sign to, to pass the, the hitter, not some computer that just tells everyone what's going on. It's just weird, you know? Did a catch? Hey, stupid question, Ryan. But I, I mean, as a former pitcher, did a catch ever get mad at you instead of giving you a signal? They just flipped you the bird in between their legs. <laughs> hey, listen, I never got the, I never got the bird, but it's pretty much the same thing, man. I've had some catches where I'll shake off, shake off, and just that, like that pulsing finger down, and just to say, listen, dude, I'm going to come out and headbutt you in a second if you don't throw this pitch. Or you get the old, like, you get the old, like, just let down, like. With a catch, you just see that, you know, obviously they've got the mask on. They just, like, kind of shrug their shoulders and, like, put the sign down. Like, Here you go. This is what you want. Like a kid who, you know, you just finally give a, a, you know, a treat to a kid who's chucking a tantrum. That's how it was sometimes. I'm not joking. That'd be funny. They're just like, Ryan, just throw the damn fastball. Stop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hey, seriously, if you watch, if you pay attention enough, I know baseball is one of those games that you don't quite – Sometimes you know the, the the fan on the fence doesn't pay attention, but dude, if you pay attention to that, that stuff, you can see it. But not now because they got the little gizmos on their wrist, so that takes that away too. Or maybe you know, maybe he might just slap the the button too hard and the button pops out or something. I don't know. So you were, we're, you, you, we're talking to Ryan Roland Smith, of course, Mariners versus the Twins today at one o'clock on Root Sports. It's in Minnesota, and of course, Ryan, you can catch him on that. Uh, you know, you thought the big controversy that you hope we wouldn't talk about was, of course, the the new ways that signs are being sent to the pitcher and catcher and all that. But the big controversy actually has been started by Steve Miggs. Everyone is calling Julio Rodriguez J Rod, and like Steve it. Steve doesn't like it, and so he, I, he he wants to run this by you. Maybe you'll be the first guy to come up with and use this alternate nickname that Steve has for uh, Julio. Well, you remember in the Adam Sandler movie they referred to, it was Julia Gulia, so I'm thinking we go with Julio yeah. Gulia. I, I, honestly, I don't mind that. Now, I haven't, I, I, that's actually that's actually very clever. Good, good job on that one. I, I think it's, it's, <laughs> CBJ, kiss my butt. I feel like he just I, I, gave I, I, you that shrug the shoulder sign is what he just he gave, gave me the bless your heart. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I will say this. You have you have ruined me that today because we are talking a lot of Julio Rodriguez. And I was going to drop the old J-Rod on him, but now I'm going to be thinking of you and that silly Julio, Gooley, whatever the hell you've come up with. Oh, dude, if you say that on Root <laughs> every Sports. Time, every time I have to say that name. 
No, no. Uh, what, what, why is it C? What, what, what is it about the, the J-Rod you don't like? Is it too close to A-Rod? Is, yeah. that, is that where yeah. we're going? Yeah, and you know, A-Rod yeah. left yeah. on bad terms. I feel like, you know what, we don't have, we don't need that kind of mojo with this guy. I'm, exci- I'm almost tempted to buy his t-shirt with his name on the back. I've been torn between him and Kellenic. I don't know, maybe you can help me pick. I'm too cheap to buy a jersey, so I'm going to get the t-shirt with the name well, and number. Yeah, no, I'm with you too. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty tight on, on, on money too. I'm not going to lie. I'm not dropping, you know, I don't know how much it costs for a jersey, but the, the t-shirts you can wear everywhere. I, I get right. it. But I would still, I would still go the Rodriguez jersey. I would. Now, I'm, I'm kind of with you on this. I'm, I haven't thought about it a whole lot, but the fact that you just, it's not, I'm not saying it's, the, the Mariners marketing team do a, an amazing job and they're pumping this kid. We haven't even talked about him yet, uh, on, d- during this chat, but he is, first of all, forget the name. This kid is an absolute stud, man. I never forget it. I really paid attention last year. A buddy of mine's a scout. He was watching him in A ball last year. He was watching him up in Everett, which is now the high A team for the Mariners. And he was texting me back and forth, and he was, you know, whether just random. I said, "Oh, how's Julio Rodriguez?" Like he goes, "Dude, it is." I've never heard this guy because this guy's a glass half empty type of dude. He basically flat out said to me, "He goes, dude, it is a waste of time him being here right now. It is a waste of time." Wow. I was like, "Really?" And he goes, he goes, yeah, man. I mean, I'm, I'm watching him. It's like, no, no, no. He should be literally weeks away from the big leagues. Now, this was like halfway through last year. Wow. And when, when someone like that, someone who I respect their opinion a lot says that, you're like, you really start to pay attention. And then when you saw him in spring training, man, he just has a different presence. He, there is something really special about this kid. Yeah, you know, J-Rod, A-Rod, I get it. But, man, he, he's someone you can definitely root for. Plus, he gets it, man. He's one of these kids that just... He's got that little bit of arrogance, but he just absorbs all this superstardom and just and just absolutely treats it the right way. He's just he he really respects the game and all those little things. I just man, he, I can't wait to watch him today. So listen, Ryan, this is your opportunity. Everyone's going the one way, but if you Julio Julio him and you're the one that Dude. starts it, do you realize? <laughs> I mean, that's your catchphrase. I think you got to go Julio Julio if you're going to talk about him today. Dude, I'm not big time enough to try and you know remove my job by saying that on, on air. I, I would was, love. If I was like, if I was like Edgar Martinez or some Mariners legend, fair enough. I might try and mess with it and throw Steve's name out there, but, but not me, man. I'm just some scrub trying to keep his job. No chance. Not happening. Could you imagine the post game meeting that they got Root Sports like Ryan? What were you thinking when you said Julio Julio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, yeah. you, uh, and then exactly. you mention our names and they go, you know, Ryan, you need to make better choices. You're really- <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you got to stop hanging out with that crowd. That's, that's, right. that's right. Oh, man. Well, make sure you tune in. Uh, Ryan Roland Smith, uh, one of the great analysts of uh, a great team on Root Sports. As uh, the Mariners start their season today in Minnesota, 1 o'clock on Root Sports. You can tweet Ryan at hyphen18. Don't forget his podcast, The Top Step with Ryan Roland Smith and Grant Balfour. Well, Ryan, we will talk to you, and hopefully we'll talk to you later on this season, too, because uh, we're hoping we get lots of great things to talk about with the Mariners. That would be fun. Let's do it, man. I'm hoping so. Hopefully, when, next time I talk to you guys there, you know, ahead of that division, doing things, doing big things. So it, it's been fun, guys. Happy opening day, and hopefully talk to you guys soon. Definitely. Well, I, I appreciate Definitely. it, buddy. Boy, that would be great, because everybody's, of course, picking the Astros again. But, man, how cool would that be if the Mariners shock everybody, including those Oh, well, yeah, man, I just, how about a sweep next time when we play Houston? Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, I mean, yeah, they're not oh. losing, PJ. They're going to win every game this year. Oh, so well, that's a game. Wow. Yeah, it's a, this is a brave prediction right yep, there. led by Julio Gulio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he did get this one right. Which Guns N' Roses bassist played in the band? Jeff McKagan. The, yes. <laughs> the fart. The like fart. Yes. In the other room. Yes. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Well, you know what, Steve? Bold question answer. Or bold Mariners prediction. Okay. Can you beat this guy? No. Well, you're going to get a shot. Two oh six four two one Rock. We're playing Beat Migs at eight fifty on the Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I know if bankruptcy is going to provide me with relief? What are the steps for my situation? Uh, There's so much information out there about bankruptcy with the internet and uh, what people have heard from friends and and other people that they've talked to about their financial issues or or bankruptcy. Uh, There's there's also a lot of bad information out there or, or urban legends about bankruptcy. In order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you need to talk to an attorney that's experienced in bankruptcy. So in order to determine whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, you should talk to an experienced bankruptcy attorney. 
And right, my job is not to convince you to file bankruptcy. My job is to help you to, to make that decision and have all the facts uh, so that you can make an informed decision about whether bankruptcy makes sense for you, what benefits it's going to have for you, and what the downside of filing bankruptcy is. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com.